Melvin Manhoof is probably, he's in my top 10 favorite kickboxers of all time. He was a wild motherfucker, and he was so powerful. And he was all gas, no brakes. And the most, for sure, the most destructive kickboxer that ever fought in Pride. Right up there with uh, Mirko Prokop. Like that, that level, although Mirko was more successful. But Melvin, was, because Melvin was much smaller. Hi everyone, you have already seen the title of the video and listened to Joe Rogan's memories. So you guys gotta know what a titanic rock we are going to talk about. There are people in the world of martial arts whose career transcends through the time and goes down in history. One of such figures is legendary Melvin Manhoff, whose name is admired by his fans and fellow fighters for his incredible journey in mixed martial arts and kickboxing. His career is a testament to his unshakable spirit, persistence and first of all, his unbelievable skills in the ring. The story of Melvin Manhoff is not only about victories, it's a story of overcoming challenges and leaving a bright mark in the sport. As he was born in a Surinamese family and grew up in the Netherlands, he was destined to fight from the very beginning. His path in kickboxing brought him to the spotlight, showing his incredible striking skills and furious zeal. Manhoff became an inseparable part of K1 where he faced the best kickboxers in the world. Success is not the only thing that makes Manhoff's career so amazing, but also his ability to inspire the future generation of fighters. He embodies hard work, loyalty and unshakable faith in his abilities. As fans, we have to remember Manoff not only for his achievements, but also for his unwavering spirit he carried through his entire career. Alright guys, hit the like button, don't forget to leave comments with 4 words, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell so you won't miss our hardcore and old school videos. Here we go! Melvin Manhoff, Shungo Oyama Before we dive into the teeth-shattering career of the Dutch Surinamese fighter, I would like to remind you about the dry stats on the record of Melv. 32 wins and 29 knockouts, guys. Yep, you heard that right. 91% finish rate, guys. Can you imagine that? This guy was putting people to sleep more effectively than a boring movie that people watch on Saturday nights after a hard day at work. And now, let's start our immersion in the first fight of the merciless Manoff in our beloved Japanese organization, Pride. And the one who welcomes a vivid Surinamese in the ring is no less vivid Japanese Shungo Oyama. This fight took place in 2006. Yes, not those hardcore 90s, but with its own vibe and atmosphere. Not to mention these vintage clips before the fights. Very cool. We got a bit carried away, but I think that every time we do that, it's a pleasure for the eyes of nostalgia lovers. So the striker team does not regret it at all. The ref points fighters to their corners, explains the rules and all formalities and off we go. Bell, fight. The Japanese presses Melvin to the ropes and tries to keep him at the end of his jab, while the Dutch kickboxer doesn't force things to happen and accepts Oyama's game. Melvin beautifully gets the Japanese out of position, but we didn't see any punches afterwards. Manhoff started to pull his opponent. Light low kick from Shungo. And what was that? A back fist from the Japanese from a mile away. If Nick Diaz saw that strike, he would have had something to say. Anyway, we move on. Fighters are not putting all of their cards on the table yet and steadily feeling each other out. Jab for good measure and a big right hand. It seems like Melvin starts to find his distance. Shungo jumps for the legs to stay out of trouble and yes guys, that's the tournament with such rules. Don't be surprised. But Manhoff defended and began to assault this Japanese fortress. Hands and legs are flying all over the place and Dutch Surinamese is in the wild mode. Oyama is forced to survive, god damn. Shungo goes down and the referee had to step in so enraged Melvin wouldn't kill this poor guy. It's over. Get the guy to the hospital and let him rest. I hope you're getting warmed up, our dear viewers. Let's move on. 
Melvin Manhoff, Tatsufumi Tomihira. Having two of his fights cancelled, Melvin No Mercy Manhoff took the fight against another Japanese, Tatsufumi Tomihira. That happened in the same year of 2006. By the way, one of the cancelled fights was against Alistair Overeem. I'm scared to imagine how a jacked Alistair would look in the front of a not too big Melvin. That's who he is, anyone, anytime. Let's get back to the fight, right off the bat. Bell, fight, let's go. Tatsufumi immediately starts to throw kicks at his opponent, while Melvin stands like a rock in his shining red gloves. Left hook and a vicious low from No Mercy. Then he checks the kick from the Japanese and immediately explodes with a furious combination. Jab, left, another one, and finishes with a left kick. The crowd buzzes, men start to fight, clinch to slow the pace down, big right from Melvin. The hand misses, but the low kick reaches the target. Tomihiro shows that this would not work on him. Tatsufumi throws a middle kick, then a left front kick. The Japanese tries to work with singular strikes, but I think that's a mistake as No Mercy takes it with a volume. An uppercut to the body from the Surinamese in Mike Tyson style. Low kick, strikes with both hands. The Japanese crowd stands up, what a fight. A looping overhand from Manhoff and a left to the chin makes Tomihira lay down on the canvas. God damn it guys, but Tatsufumi is not the timid type. He gets up. One can clearly see that he is a descendant of samurais. Right feint, left to the body, and a high kick almost reaches its target. One second pause, and then a right hand to Tatsufumi's skull. Oh my goodness, what a symphony of strikes. The Japanese is confused. Right hook, left shot, right hook to the head again, shot to the body, and Tomihira survives in the clinch. The right hand flies to the dome again. The Japanese retreats, left to the head, left to the liver, right to the head. Left to the same spot, right hand crashes on the skull, and oh my god, Tatsufumi goes down. The ref starts the count, but the Japanese's face says that it's over. Ref, let the guy rest, he needs to get in the hot spring and erase this day from his memory. Melvin Manhoff, Ian Freeman. As he extended his win streak, the Dutch Surinamese fought in Cage Rage. By the way, the name of the organization really fits Manhoff's style. Melvin's opponent happened to be Ian Freeman with a solid record of 13 and 2. You might not believe it, but it's the year of 2006 again. A fourth fight for No Mercy, four fights, two cancellations, quite productive. At those times, it was a norm. The fighters were ready to fight as frequently as possible. What a cool time it was, guys. So what about the fight? I will show you now. We won't spend too much time on the cage rage. Bell, fight. Ian misses with a low, rushes at his opponent, eats a counter left and a right straight to the chin. A vicious follow up from the Dutch school representative, but Freeman manages to survive. However, this ref happened to be competent enough to spare Ian's health. Melvin sparked him up, guys. What a machine. We move on. Melvin Manhoff, Ruslan Karayev. After beating Ian, Shungo Oyama for the second time and Crosley Gracie, Melvin lost two fights. Grappler Yoshihiro caught him with an armbar and the legendary Ray Sefo finished him on the feet. And by the way, guys, I remind you that all of this happened in one calendar year. Manoff returned to the winning path in the fight against Kazuo Takahashi. But after the Japanese, No Mercy once again tasted defeat against Dong Sik Yun. Alternating wins and losses, the Surinamese went up against another great of this sport, Ruslan Karayev, who had plenty of fights against other legends. And what about his fights with Badahari? The announcer's work at those times was a piece of art and we get to the actual fight to find who will leave the ring on one's own two feet and who will be revived and transported to the backstage. Bell, fight! Superman punch from Ruslan, and Melvin lands a counter. The ref allows to continue, he didn't see the knockdown there. Karayev throws a low, tries to circle around the Surinamese, 
Melvin throws his right punch, then immediately the left one. Boom! The Russian is wobbled. What dynamite in the hands of this big guy? Jesus, Ruslan is simply out of there. Melvin sent him to the Shadow Realm. It's really bad for Karayev right now. But as soon as adrenaline wears down and Manov realizes what is going on in the K1 ring, he immediately approaches his opponent and helps him get up. Respect comes first, but what a finish it was, guys. The Russian got hit with a missile to the face. <laughs> Melvin Manhoff, Fabio Silva. Grand Prix K1 Heroes 2007, second stage. In the first tour, Melvin managed to get through the Ivorian kicker in Bernard Akar and move further in the bracket where he faced the Brazilian athlete Fabio Silva. The Brazilian clearly went a little bit over the top in what he takes to increase the chances of winning, as it seemed like he is too charged up in this fight. On the contrary, Manhoff looked very calm, a couple of clumsy attempts to bump fists from both fighters. Bell, fight, let's go! Silva immediately goes aggressive, but Manov doesn't want to get pressed to the ropes and the fight flows into a vicious clinch. Some adult content on your screen and let's get back to the action. Middle kick from the Brazilian, whipping kick from Melvin. There are no signs of trouble. Bam, boom, one, two. Fabio tries to even things out and hugs his vis-a-vis. -vis. But Manov doesn't want to be friends. He wants to hit Silva on the head. But the referee doesn't let this fight continue. God damn, what hammers does this stubby guy have? The Japanese's face in the background shows that we are not the only ones shocked by No Mercy's power. <laughs> Melvin Manhoff, Yosuke Nishijima. K1 tournament that couldn't take place without a Dutch Surinamese because the tournament was called Dynamite, and considering how short the fights of our hero were, it was clear that he deserves to be on this card like nobody else. Manhoff was on a streak of three victories at that period of time, and he could extend it to four in a row. Bell, fight, let's enjoy. The Japanese literally runs at his vis-a-vis. -vis. I even got scared sitting behind the screen. The fighters start to feel each other out. Yosuke fooled us. Melvin tries to find his distance to dispatch Nishijima with a couple of shots. A whipping middle kick, a looping right punch. Left one misses, but one strike still gets through. But the Japanese are famous for their granite chins. Manhoff turns up, starts to land to different levels with all limbs that he has. Oh man, the Surinamese press this prey to the ropes. Yosuke is forced to cover up, and Manhoff shoots for the legs. Really? He playfully takes his battered opponent down, gets to the side control. The Dutch pushes the head, gets to the mount and starts to put it on Nishijima's head. Do you hear the sound of these strikes, guys? Melvin turns it up and starts to hammer away on Yosuke's head. The Japanese's head bounces around the K1 canvas like a basketball. It's all over. He simply smashes his opponent into the canvas and doesn't give him any chances neither on the feet nor on the ground. Damn, this man doesn't cease to impress me. Four wins in a row, four finishes, a great year of 2007 for the legend. Unfortunately, another fight got cancelled a bit earlier. This time we were deprived of an opportunity to see the Surinamese against Peter Ertz the legend and king of K1, who in his time crushed skulls of the same legends of this sport. <laughs> Melvin Manhoff, Day 1 Kim At the Dream 3 tournament, Melvin wanted to bounce back from the loss to Remy Bonyaski, whom he fought a little earlier. His next prey happened to be an athlete from South Korea who was on a record of 11 wins and 5 losses, but he ultimately managed to return to the winning path in his last fight after finishing a tough Marcelo Garcia. How about this Japanese entertainment and camera rolls? I love it! Let's go! As always, fighters try not to make mistakes and obtain data to leave the ring with a raised hand. Left hook, 
convergence and the Korean shoots for the legs to take his vis-a-vis -vis down. But No Mercy skillfully keeps his balance due to a low center of gravity. However, Won Kim makes a mistake and finds himself on his back. Manhoff turns and gets to the position to land punches, but the Korean wrestler clearly slows the fight down. The ref got tired of that and he separated the guys to their corners. Kim throws a left and eats a shot to the head but returns the favor. The Surinamese is stunned, he retreats to the ropes and the wrestler turns into a striker. And we get to see some dirty action, a wild brawl. No Mercy slips, gets up and grabs the ropes and Manhoff finally lets himself get taken down. The Surinamese defends and gets up from under a vicious Korean. God damn, Manhoff is good in both aspects, but Kim is okay with getting on his back and pulls Melvin into his guard. But the hero of our video sweeps the Korean and starts to weigh in from the top position himself. A fist and a knee to the dome, what a combination on the ground, did you see that? And he simply begins to smash his vis-a-vis, -vis. it's a finish, another stoppage guys. Melvin Manhoff, Kazushi Sakuraba Maybe not everybody knows other Japanese fighters from this video, but hardcore fans know who Kazushi Sakuraba is. These two legends were destined to face each other at Dream 4 in 2008. By that time, the Japanese was already on his way out, but one shouldn't write an experienced veteran off. Bell, fight, let's watch. The first minute of the fight was a staring contest and they didn't want to force things until Melvin No Mercy broke the silence. Baits the Japanese a couple of times and then boom, high kick. Kazushi definitely felt that dynamite kick. And Manhoff enters the mode of a Surinamese berserk. Hammers thrust in the skull of the Japanese and Sakuraba is forced to escape. Escape, pray and wait for the moment to stop the infinite barrage of strikes from Melvin. Kazushi's head gets out of the ring, but it's okay. Let's just drag him by the heel and continue to go after him. A short guide from Manhoff, Sakuraba just lays down and doesn't want to get up. Maybe he accepted this fight as a punching dummy and for now, Surinamese doesn't give him any chances. And while Kazushi's legs were flinching from time to time, a few seconds later his lower limbs stopped moving completely. The ref stops this insanity. God damn, simply a beatdown and massacre. Jesus, what a one-sided and vicious fight. Melvin Manhoff, Paul Slowinski. After he lost to Gegard Musasi at Dream 6, Melvin decided to return to good old kickboxing and signed the contract for the fight against Paul Slowinski. The bout happened at Grand Prix in K1 2008. The ref starts the fight and we see how inferior in terms of size Melvin is. Slowinski is three heads taller than his opponent and immediately starts to press him to the ropes using his size. But when did it actually stop the Surinamese from blasting his opponents? Paul throws heavy low kicks. Melvin tries to land on Slowinski's head and begins to apply pressure himself. But Paul is not a timid type. Low from Manhoff, then a jab. He timely catches Slowinski's kick and makes him drop on the canvas. His size played against him in this sequence. Melvin works with combinations, hoping to catch Paul to knock him out cold. Overhand from Manhoff, left to the skull from Slowinski, right hand to the dome, and then eats a shot himself. Paul starts to snatch the initiative. What a fight! Gets the opponent out of position and unloads on Slowinski. Does it again and Paul starts to retreat to the ropes and boom! Manhoff catches his vis-a-vis. -vis. Paul is in a different dimension right now, but he gets up. What a testosterone machine Slowinski is! Melvin is not willing to back down and wants to finish his victim like a predator. Bam! Boom! Paul gets stormed with everything there is to throw and Slowinski is clearly stunned. Only the ropes help him to stay on his feet, but No Mercy rushes at him to finish the job. Bam! 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 How does this Polish machine still stand? And Melvin lands everything, everything. More shots, boom! Knocks his vis-a-vis -vis out stiff, it's over. Melvin No Mercy Manhoff, it was really scary. Редактор
Melvin Manhoff, Melvin Manhoff, Mark Hunt. Every martial arts fan knows who Melvin is and the same thing can be said about Mark Hunt. Mr. Calmness, the Samoan knockout artist and simply a legend with a big letter L. We should mention that Mark is about 70 pounds heavier than Manhoff. I think there is no need to say anything guys, the poster speaks for itself as well as the fighter's weight so who am I to stop our dear viewers from enjoying this tournament? Let's go! A simply iconic walkout of Manhoff, a collar, dancing fellow jacked buddies, it seemed like I know what inspired Israel Adesanya, a charming and charismatic hound. Mark Hunt as always walked out with a stone face and something tells me that one of them will be put to sleep right in the center of the spotlight. Bell, let's go. Mark rushes at the Surinamese and gets caught with a light punch from Melvin. But he goes down. Oh my god. And then the Dutch immediately batters his prey. What the hell just happened? One shot and the Samoan lays on the canvas. Oh my. What kind of missile launcher this guy has? Melvin Manhoff, Ramazan Ramazanov. 2009 Grand Prix of a legendary K1. Two uncompromising fighters that earned a reputation of ruthless brawlers were supposed to clash in the ring. I would like to show you the walkout of the Surinamese killer once again. As at those times, not everybody could deliver such stuff. Melvin greets the Japanese crowd while the Russian gangster watches it and tries to focus on the fight. The start of the bout, ladies and gentlemen. The fight begins with low kicks from Melvin, but it's Ramazan who pressures his opponent. Athletes are feeling each other out as nobody wants to fall out of Grand Prix's quarterfinals. First combination from the Dutch school representative, but he whiffs. A vicious middle kick from Ramazanov. Melvin answers with a leg kick. Fighters wait for the right moment to throw their deadly strikes. Ooh, spinning stuff from Ramazan, but misses. The Surinamese starts to pressure the Russian. Melvin jumps Ramazan, presses him to the ropes and his legs start to wobble from Manov's onslaught. But Ramazanov gets up. The Russian is clearly angry and wants to pay back as soon as possible. A big one too from Ramazan, but not very accurate. And Melvin rushes at him another time, but Ramazanov retreats to stay out of trouble. Backs up to the ropes and tries to throw his heavy kicks. Bam, bam, bam. Ramazanov gets to his knees and the ref has to step in. Ramazan gets back to his feet, but his legs refuse to work. Melvin No Mercy Manhoff is the winner. I wouldn't want to miss a jab from this athlete, even half the power. Melvin Manhoff, Dennis Ratz. As he got rid of Ramazan Ramazanov, Melvin attended the Showtime tournament where the Hungarian fighter Dennis Ratz waited for him in the opposite corner. Though Melvin was often losing, his style made him dangerous at any point of the fight. That's why the fans still waited for him to compete, like kids waiting for their mother to get back from the store to snack on some sweet and junk stuff. By the way, there was nothing new in this fight. Manhoff, as always, was smaller than his rival. But does that make him an easy opponent? Not at all. Bell, fight, let's go. Fighters actively start the first round. Nobody wants to give up the scent of the ring. Dennis tries to throw sand in Manhoff's eyes and then throws one two, but eats counter shots from Melvin. Mr. No Mercy starts to feel the weakness in his opponent and presses him to the ropes. The Hungarian gets barraged with strikes and Dennis simply goes down on the canvas but the ref doesn't count and lets the fight continue. Ratz looks very antsy and puzzled. Manhoff sees that and begins to unload his hammers to the tall Hungarian. Boom, boom, boom. Dennis tries to move and throw front kicks to keep explosive Melvin at a comfortable distance but he wasn't really successful in that. That's the end of the first round, which goes in favor of no mercy. Second round guys, it starts off slowly. Fighters bait each other and throw low kicks. 
the Hungarian throws his knees and then clinches to avoid explosive punches of the Surinamese. Hooked from the mid-range, a grab and a knee to the body. Dennis clinches with his opponent and the ref separates the fighters. The Hungarian clearly wants to drag Melvin into the deep waters, so he tries to hurt Manhoff's body. Boom! Knee! Then middle kick. Not critical, but it's not pleasant either. Another knee, but Melvin is able to land shots too. Left hook. Front kick from Dennis. Boom! Vicious right. Another one. Melvin misses with the right. No mercy starts to stalk his vis-a-vis. -vis. Boom to the body. Rutz clinches. Dirty brawl at the ropes. Manhoff is not willing to back down. The Hungarian tries to slow things down. He doesn't want to let Melvin throw. That's how the second round went down. Third round. Well guys, it's time to show the viewers why you are in this video. Duck from Melvin. Left hook. Right hand to the head. Left to the dome of the Hungarian tank. A long combination continues. Dennis tries to clinch and Rutz falls at the ropes. The ref counts, but the Hungarian is not a timid type and gets back to his feet. Front kick to the head. The Surinamese keeps pressing. Left hook and right straight. Dennis tries to push Manhoff and falls from his own front kick. Knee from the Hungarian. Boom! Left to the head. It's over. Dennis broke mentally and his body language tells us that this guy doesn't want to continue. End it, ref. Melvin, no mercy, Manuf. Melvin Manhoff, Kazuo Misaki. As he lost via decision to Remy Bonyaski in the finale of K1 Grand Prix 2009 and going through another fight cancellation, it was decided to put our hero against an experienced Japanese, Kazuo Misaki. Misaki looks like a tough gangster from the country of the rising sun. So I guess the fight is going to be entertaining. Are you ready guys? Then let's go! First round. Fighters traditionally don't force things to happen but wait on who is going to flinch first. Both fighters have heavy hands so nobody wants to make mistakes and travel to the shadow realm. Manoff breaks the silence and begins to throw a hand combination. A series of hooks reaches the target, and no matter how hard the Japanese tried, he couldn't do anything about the C4s in the hands of Melvin. Another finish in a glorious career of Melvin No Mercy Manhole. Super intense. Let's look at all the big kibos! The big Melvin Manhove, Ryo Karamura. The period from 2010 to the beginning of 2012 was not the easiest one for Manhoff. Five losses, one no contest and one cancellation. Melvin managed to get out of the rough patch in September of 2012 in the fight against Young Kim at the Road FC 9 tournament and he snatched that victory with his strong hands via split decision. The Surinamese wanted to bounce back in the fight against Ryo Kawamura at 1FC tournament. Looking at Melvin's walkout, he must have been in a great mood despite the streak of losses, cancellations and no contests. His opponent was in intimidating shorts. So guys, I think this fight will deliver us a lot of emotions. I'm speaking from personal experience of watching hardcore and old school fights. First round, and how dare you Karamura? Can't look at it without a smile. Such a body movement clearly caught Melvin off guard because it's he himself who is famous for outrageous behavior. It's not even clear if Ryo is wobbled or tries to confuse his opponent. I'm going to be honest guys, it was entertaining until I realized that Kawamura planned on doing this for the entire fight. Melvin was definitely displeased with how this fight was going down. And after defiant jumps from Ryo, Manhoff lets the crowd know that the Japanese is the only one to blame for avoiding the fight. But thank God, Kawamura stops showboating and starts fighting. Right overhand. Dodge from the Japanese. One, two whiffs. Athletes got active, which cannot help but please. Right hand from No Mercy. Ryo gets him out of position. Left to the body and right hand to the eye from Kawamura. And it's like the Surinamese got a little bit wobbled, but a couple of shots to the Japanese let him know that a cornered dog only gets more dangerous. Takedown attempt from a mile away and boom! 
right hand from Hal straight to the dome and a finishing hammer fist to the Japanese who clearly was enraging Melvin with his taunts for the entire fight. But Melvin would never refuse a handshake and always showed due respect to his opponents. Respect. Melvin Manhoff, Evangelisto Santos. All of us know Evangelisto as a vicious fighter who always went forward in his fights. You also might remember this athlete as the man who literally got his skull crushed by Michael Venom Page. But Cyborg is a cyborg for a reason. He provides us with such performances, so this fight will not make you disappointed in both athletes. First round. Damn, what a vicious low from the Brazilian. Melvin even bounces to the cage. An amplitude front kick from Santos. He clearly doesn't want to win via decision. A hard leg kick from Manhoff now. High kick from Evangelisto and a clumsy takedown attempt. Melvin counters and starts to unload with a wild combination to the covered Brazilian. No Mercy simply blasts his opponent. Pure rage in the cage. What a show out from this stubby Surinamese. The referee stops this beatdown. It's all over. Well guys, the video comes to an end. The career of Melvin Manhoff as a fighter is something truly incredible. For the years of his activity, he established himself as one of the most impressive and entertaining personalities in the world of martial arts. Beginning from his early days as a kickboxer and transitioning to mixed martial arts, Manhoff's career was marked with a distinctive mastery, unshakable decisiveness and continuous strive for perfection. Manhoff's success in both kickboxing and MMA proves his versatility as a fighter. He faced and beat veterans, prospects and true legends of these sports, leaving a remarkable trace with his explosive strikes and inhuman ferocity. His fighting style, which consisted of lightning-fast combinations and powerful leg kicks, entertained the fans around the world and earned him a loyal fan base. Apart from achievements in the ring and the cage, Melvin Manhoff is famous for his fair play and ability to inspire others. He demonstrated persistence in challenging circumstances and came back stronger than ever after failures. His love for hard work and loyalty to his craft serves as an example for beginner fighters and athletes who aspire to reach the top in their disciplines. Summing up Manhoff's career, he obviously built a distinctive legacy. He proved that talent, hard work and a spirit of a true warrior can lead to greatness in martial arts. The name of Melvin Manhoff will stay in the history of MMA and kickboxing forever and his impact on the sport will continue to inspire the future generations of fighters. In the end, Melvin Manhoff's career is a testament that aspiration towards one's passion combined with an unshakable dedication can make the person an icon in the world of martial arts. His journey serves as an inspiration not only for fighters, but for everybody who strives to achieve their dreams with a steady determination and fighting spirit. I have to say goodbye guys, see you soon and don't forget to hit the bell, the subscribe button and leave the comments below.